Patrick, welcome to this it's season's greatest Peru? eight out of ten game. Oh, you Uncharted really three. Bring up Peru? Holy shit, this game is pretty. Uh, yeah, pretty damn good looking, right? Right? I was man. Yeah. That damn trees. That prison within a year. Just for the record, I don't think this game is an eight out of ten. I think this game. Well, whatever. John John Bond is a one to ten scale. Review it's score rubrics goes right out the window. I don't care. This game's great. Yes. Stop fighting with each other. Just play great video games. Internet hugs. Of which this is one. Uh, we are. Uh, this is chapter six, which you saw at the beginning. Look at that water. Look at look at everything. The shadow. I don't know if I can get a good like, camera angle on it, but uh, but look at the, even just the way that the shadows are working on those trees, where you yeah. can see like oh, so good. the light filtering through the individual leaves, and you know because it's Naughty Dog that is actually happening as yeah. opposed to a static texture that uh, is for sure. that. This may have I think this probably was in uh, was in two as well, but more attention to detail, like how his pants are wet at the bottom, just because I ran through that stream. Can't get, get those of that. pants wet. I can't get enough of that stuff. Uh, it's all. <laughs> It's all minor details here and there, but they all cumulatively add up to a really impressive experience. Uh, so yeah, chapter six. Just like in Lawrence's notes. What are we doing here? We are in France. Uh, this game, I mean, so I mean, this game, top to bottom, is kind of. This sounds horribly reductive, but you you could look at this as Uncharted two two. Well, like it's, I, I, it's, it's it, the same. It's the same basic formula. Like they they hammered it out so thoroughly in two that they've basically done more of that. Unch kind uh, of like, kind of like Assassin's Creed. Well, Assassin's Creed is a little, little bit longer in the tooth, but right. more Uncharted is not necessarily a bad. Thing. Definitely not. At least for now, you know, if they had made like five in a row of these or something, you could maybe have a complaint. But uh, but the quality is is, is uh, still yeah, there. The spectacle there. is still there. There is still more that they can do, you know, in this world with this character, yep. and it's because they, they've gone the Indiana Jones route That's of having some supernatural elements. Said. It gives them a lot of leeway to oh, yeah. keep doing interesting things. Yep. Look at Even that. if those supernatural things don't always pan out in, in the game's ending. Well, there's no, I, I can tell you right now, there are no blue guys in this Great. game. Oh, no! <laughs> yep. You haven't been reading my books again, have you, Sully? They're green, uh, they're green the original guys. Castle was no, built in the 11th rip. century. The rest um, was added on later. You know what weirds me out is, I don't know if I can get him to, no, he's, he's done talking, but there's no bearing uh, between, or there's no bearing of what the character is doing on the way the character is talking. Like, I could be in the middle of that jump and he would just... Be talking. Continue. I mean, granted, you know, you record the dialogue once, and like you've got the sample, oh, this looks and sketchy. you know, that's all you can do with it is play it back. But it's little, little, maybe maybe little, something to, little cognitive dissonance. Maybe in terms yeah, of, maybe maybe something to think about for the next one or something is like a way to. Ah, what are you waiting for? Somehow make the like the because there's so much yeah, incidental like ambient problem. dialogue in these things. I guess it, the problem there cool. is yeah, the problem there is that you, you don't know what the player is necessarily doing. Yeah, you're right. Doing. You're right. I mean, I'm sure that's a really hard problem to solve. That's Unless you can guarantee place. in that yeah. section that they are, you know, climbing something like a ladder yeah. that What's right. this, Mr. Wizard? Dyna dynamic uh, dialogue scripting sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, you only notice stuff like that because the rest of the package is so damn polished. Like it's everything about this is so well put together. This game is really weird to watch with uh, subtitles. Yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely I mean, no, had them. Because, had them off the whole because time. The, the, it's one of the few games where I purposely keep the subtitles off because the voice acting is so good, the the animation is so great on the mouse that it really does feel just like watching a movie. Absolutely, yeah. Not getting in this way. Uh, just uh, obviously hard to hear what they're saying over our silly yammering. So, uh, but yeah, I'm totally with you. Let's do not play this game with subtitles. Don't burn the place down. Um, so they've shown a bunch of this uh, in the marketing for this game, if you have kept up with that at all. Uh, this, is the, this is what they've been calling the Burning Chateau, which is in, in France, like I said. I gotta remember. Those look like some conveniently placed bricks. Uh, yeah, everything in the world of Uncharted is just, uh, is, is just, just happens to be placed in such a way that if you were the world's best solo climber, uh, you could get just about anywhere you wanted to go. And that's, that's one of those gamey things that I'm, you know... You're totally fine with totally it. Totally fine yeah, with it. Like there's, it's, it's, you, there's only you got to make a conceit if you want to have <laughs> any sort of gameplay. Yeah, and this is the conceit that Uncharted makes. Yeah, like if if you really want to pick a bone with uh, like unrealistic stuff in in this game, that's that not the place to start. Me. And they at least, uh, especially, it, it was a leap they made in one to two of making it just look more organic in the environment. Yeah, like it's. Yeah. You'll notice in the color scheme, like it's red, which means you know as a player to follow the red stuff. 
But if you were to just look at the architecture, it, it looks like it blends into what would be a natural scheme. It's funny, it's, it's, a, right it's a really fine line because I remember uh, Enslaved, which has really similar climbing to this, got knocked for making all those handholds like blink. Like they, they literally flashed, you know, and it was just like, oh, that was just a little bit too video gamey. Right, it's a, yeah, people. yeah. You want you want it so that when you look at it at a glance, it doesn't look video gamey, but when you give it a real look over, you can see how right. how it fits yeah, within so the mechanics. Yeah, so this game is just on the other side of that line where it's like it, it's subtly right, calling up. your attention to it, lock off. but not sure, uh, it's not totally in your sure face. Off. All right, Sully. I said lock. Oh come on. What's up, Sully? You good. Uh, this game gets into a lot of uh, a lot of cool backstory the between these guys. The I'm not going to show any of that stuff, uh, partially because Naughty Dog requested that we not, like in the in the notes that came with this game. But they, it's also uh, one of those things, you know. You, this is one of the few games that you play for for the spectacle and for the story. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really neat to discover that stuff for yourself. But uh, they actually, I mean, there are like actual playable flashbacks. It's really neat to see these characters at a younger, uh, an earlier stage in their lives, and uh, kind of see how they came together and. and what makes them tick. And, what, it's, and it's cool because through the magic of video games, that's not as weird of a thing as it can be in films to right. try and accomplish that. Turns out what makes them tick is treasure. I don't know <laughs> yeah, if... Uh, but not greed, work. right? Not, like yeah. The, the, pur the pursuit of mysterious well, objects and... What's, what's ironic about it is that they're always on the cusp of like untold <laughs> wealth, but it's never quite in reach, you know? Like these guys, these guys never really end up with more money at the end than they had at the beginning. It's like... You know, they're they're almost really just in it for the the, the adventure, you know. Well, yeah, you kind you kind of get the sense that kind of like Indiana Jones, it's more about the pursuit than the actual end game of acquiring the object. That if they actually did become rich, they would they would probably just end up being playboys that were going out pursuing more adventure anyway. Yeah, totally. It's, it's not necessarily about that. Totally. Oh, this is rickety. I have an idea. Do you do a lot more of examining your notebook to Absolutely. solve puzzles in this one? I really uh, like that in the second one. They, there's not a ton of moments like that in this, but there are enough. Uh, and they're really well done. There's, if I remember, I think there's one of the lesser ones in, in this area here that hopefully we'll get to pretty soon if I can I'll try not to pull my usual routine of trying to hurry through this and screwing it all up. But. Uh, uh, but yeah, there's absolutely some of that stuff. Some good combat around here too. This this area, you know, I mean, I understand why they've been showing a lot of this right, because here we go. this is a, this area is a good cross section of pretty much everything that makes Uncharted tick. Uh, there's there's little you know there's little platforming puzzles like that. There's uh, there's the, the environmental puzzle stuff that you were talking about. There's a lot of combat. There's this this place ends with a hell of a set piece. Uh, so it's just kind of some of everything. It's basically here. just like the one of the first things they were showing for the game, and especially in 3D too. Yeah, uh, okay. was the, when this place to to goes tower. up in flames. I actually saw this sequence play out on a movie screen last week. That was yeah, kind of crazy. How did that look on a? Uh, I, I had uh, I had neglected to grab 3D glasses, so it was kind of hard to. <laughs> it's really hard to uh, interpret what my eyes were seeing, but uh, uh, but uh, pretty nice. I don't have a 3D TV at home. I wish I could have tried this for real in 3D. Um, when I when I saw it at GDC, it's it, it definitely seemed a, a nicer implementation than most. But uh, the the thing that kind of kills it for me is when you have these variable perspective cameras that are controlled by the player. It it, it takes away authorship of the 3D. So it, everything is kind of flat by nature, just because the, the game designers or the or the artists can't they can't use the full range of depth because they don't know where you're gonna be. Yep. So it seemed better than most, but uh, still not quite old. enough to, to push me over yeah. the edge. That the one and, and just on the technical side, I'm still not thrilled with nice. like you know the hit the frame rate you often take with uh, with 3D. I got I got really worried uh, early on in this game. There's uh, like one well, of the first times that you're actually uh, ever in combat, you come up against these guys. Maybe they were in two, but they've got laser sights. So you're you're behind cover and they're like pointing these big red beams in your face, and they it looks like the kind of thing that is in some kind of 3D product just to call your attention to 3D. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, look, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. look, the laser sights are coming right at you. Like right in your face. It's totally 3D. But uh, they really don't they don't lean on that nearly as much as that uh, made it seem like they would. Well, and Naughty Dog is not a studio known for having to, despite being a first-party studio, having to do Sony gimmicks. You know what I mean? They yeah. did a little bit with the uh, 
six axis stuff in one, but when, you know, haven't done anything with move and never went back to that six axis stuff after everyone was like, hey guys, that kind of sucked. I'm totally spacing out here on uh, what it is I need to be doing. Oh. Right. Looks like we can get some. Learn one of those critical path things, you know, you basically just need to go where the uh, the button prompt is. Watch it. Oh, thanks. Alright, yeah, here we go. This is uh Check it out. Look at that. That's hey, a notebook. It's a nice looking notebook. Isn't this the same symbol that was on the tower? Yeah, they do a really good job integrating this into the game. Can draw it's pretty something. Well. Yeah. And it's funny because you never see him do it, but uh, <laughs> but every time every time you hit any kind of event of, of, of significance, if you pull the notebook up right after that, there's like three new pages and they're full of stuff um, about like exactly what you just did. If I, if I had waited for it to prompt me, it would have turned right to the page that you needed. So I mean, there's not a whole lot of guesswork or like serious critical thought going on with these things. It's just a nice sense of variety. But, but yeah, it's it's variety, and I mean, if it makes you feel more connected to the world. Uh, there, there's a, I don't know if they did this in two, but there's somewhere like you'll have, so basically you'll be walking around and you'll have like a map that you can pull up or something that you overlay on what you're looking at in the environment. Hmm. I can't show you here, but it, you literally, it's just like aiming, except instead of aiming a gun, you're holding up this item. Hmm. And you can like line it up with what you're seeing to get a better sense of, uh, of how to solve the puzzle. It's, it's really neat stuff. Well, there was that, wasn't there that sequence in Uncharted 2 where you were holding up the torch uh, to light up a cave? And yeah, you had, okay, you had a, yeah, you had yeah, a blue yeah. torch. You're right, you're right. You it's, weren't aiming, you weren't like holding up the reticle, but you were you were using that to, to map against uh, to, or to bring up uh, designs on the, the cable. You're right, it's uh, it's definitely stuff like that. So this is, uh, this is a pretty easy one. Interesting. Anything in Lawrence's notebook about this? Let me check. <laughs> Already did that. Way ahead of you, Sully. Getting a Resident Evil vibe from this puzzle. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Oh, which way was Sword Guy supposed to go? I'm gonna say the only way he can. No? Is that mace? Yeah. Here, see? Mace Four and axe. Knights. Both of An axe, a shield, a sword, and a morning star. Just like the ones in this room. Wait, which one is which one is axe? Maybe we guy? gotta turn each knight so it's facing the right way. Yeah, but what's the right way? Not the sword. Isn't that axe guy over there? Yeah, that's axe. All right, which one is wrong? Oh wait, shield is supposed to look at axe, right? Funk. Well, well, a secret passage. All right, gotta hand it to you, Sully. Seems to be stuck. Okay, I'll push, you pull. On three, ready? Wait. One, two, pull, or one, two, three, pull? Just pull. <laughs> Got it. Such great banter. I love these guys. Well, the, it's just that naturalistic dialogue. Yeah. Like that, that is something yeah. any one of us has said a million times. Like, I, I want to believe that these yeah. guys just ad-libbed all of that yeah, stuff when they were doing the motion capture. You know, I'm sure plenty of it is scripted, but they've... The Night Dog guys, I mean, there's, there's a ton of great behind-the-scenes footage on this disc, and, and this those guys are... are very forthcoming about giving credit to the actors for ad-libbing and, and right. developing a, a lot of these characters on their own just just by there doing the performance. Uh, and, you know, I mean, that stuff is as great as it's always been. It's, I mean, yeah, it helps. It helps to you know have, clearly have great actors with a lot of uh, charisma and chemistry, and then you know amazing writers like Amy Hennig get through here. powering the you know from the from the top down. Yep, they love their inching your way through tight spaces in this. I can't remember if that's new or not, but. Uh, this there, is this is claustrophobic. There, it is. It is. There must be. Uh, there must be like half. Oh, oh God. fucking a! <laughs> you gotta be shitting oh, me. Dude, do you not like giant spiders? Oh, that I, that legitimately <laughs> got me. The game, oh, Jesus. Do you, uh, do you have do you have spider issues? I, I'm not a fan of spiders. A little bit of arachnophobe. Maybe you shouldn't play this game. I would not go as far as to say arachnophobe because uh, there are some. We might see one before this is over. I don't know. If there if there is an underwater swimming spider, I will get no, up no. and leave this quick look. No, nothing like that. <laughs> All right. No, I, I I don't like I, I I don't like spiders. I like you know what I mean. But like I'm not like gonna I don't freak out like a girl except when they. Blah. 
whatever uh, game. If we don't get that far, I'll say that uh, you know there's there's a booster in the multiplayer that lets you turn into a carpet of spiders. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say that there's a reason they had developed that spider tech. <laughs> uh, oh. Definitely a, a lot of nasty, cr creepy crawlies uh, in this game. In some cases. Uh, I think it's about time to shoot some dudes. There's a lot of dudes shooting in this game. Wait, yeah. yeah. Like they, right, it's kind of weird. Uh, you know, we, we referenced that Eurogamer review at the top of this, which called out the, uh, like there's kind of the, the uh, I hate to use the word stilted, but you know, like the, the, there's a very methodical way these games are paced and designed, you know, like that. Was, the game wants you to do very specific things. You, right. You, you get some agency when it comes to combat, but when it comes to the, uh, sort of the cinematic set pieces, you are being asked to do a very specific thing, and when you break from that script, you know, that, that you break from the script, and then you right. have to do it over again, yep. and part of the nature of the, the natural something. highs of that is the low Let is that down. you screw it up, and then it's not very fun to do an exciting thing a second time. Indiana Jones yeah, never so. gets hit by the boulder and then has to run from yep. the boulder again. Right. Uh, you definitely end up with some of that in this game. I'm gonna it's just part of, part of it. I'm going to stealth kill this guy. Do it. Take this out. Throw a spider in his throat. Sorry, oh, dude. Oh, man. Oh, what a, man. What a mean kill. Sucks for that guy. Uh, oh, I should have grabbed that. I think the stealth is better done in this game, and I don't have a good, like, quantifiable reason for that. I just... Maybe the cover is, is tighter, like um, a little bit stickier? Oh, I don't think I can get both of those guys, can I? You can't do any sort of dual takedown? Not. After playing Batman, that's the first thing I'm thinking of, is you, if you got close, it would have been a double oh, takedown. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, boned. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is definitely not primarily a stealth game. Uh, nothing like I need to tell you that, but, uh... Uh, but I, I The stealth in 2 was not great. Oh god, that's also not great. I don't think so. Um... Well, the thing about the stealth in 2 is that they started the game out with stealth. Right. Which was, was not necessarily... The, well, it... The game would start with stealth, but I think the first major area involved a lot of stealth when you're going along those rooftops. And yeah. That was not necessarily the, the, the strongest start. Can I see some guys over here? Where are you at? Whoop. Oh! Damn. What do you think of that? I think the combat's really. Oh, God. Is, uh, is, is really a lot of fun in these games. Uh, I think it's gotten better over time. Uh, oh, uh oh, you're gonna oh, die. I that one. You're getting shot at from behind. Yeah, you. That's one of the one of the uh, one of the unfortunate aspects of the melee is that you still take damage from other guys that are shooting you as you're fighting with a dude. That's one of the things they've talked uh, up, though, right? The the melee is, is supposed to be pretty improved in this one. It is. Uh, yeah, I mean. The, or improvements. The way you play it is kind of quick time event e. If that's a word. Uh, I don't know, you, you saw some of it there. Actually, I could just try to fight this guy. I think he's the last one. Uh, so you'll get some prompts. Well, or I can just kill him. Uh, you'll get some prompts like uh, triangle counters if the guy's... Oh, God. It's, it's a little Batman-esque. Uh, I, was, I was just about to say, it's very Batman-like. Uh, you'll, you'll get the triangle prompt if the guy's about to hit you and that'll counter him. Uh, you'll get into, like, grappling situations occasionally where you have to pound on the circle button. Oh, this is the um, section from one of the multiplayer stages, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of the multiplayer stuff is built out of the, the campaign, so uh, this place probably looked pretty familiar to you. It's one of the reasons we're showing this, because, uh, you know, playing through this game for yourself the first time is, is the most valuable way to play it, you know? Don't want to give away too much uh, ahead of time. But, uh, yeah, the, the melee stuff is, is better. I don't think we'll see any of it here, but... Uh, in a lot of cases, when you're fighting guys, uh, Drake is really good at using contextual objects in the middle of the fight. Oh. Hello. Oh, so you'll be near a chair and he'll... Uh, yeah, like a chair. Like, if you're fighting in a bar, like, he'll, like, grab a beer bottle uh, off, the, off the, the bar and just, like, smash it over a guy's head, stuff like that. So it's kind of fun to actually engage the, the melee to see what... Yeah, yeah, totally. What it'll do. I never, ever aim grenades. Why would you aim grenades? It takes too much time. Yeah. Well, you also, I mean, you can aim with an arc by line throwing them. Right. Like, you, you don't have to, like, you basically get the benefits of the aiming without uh, exposing yourself. Wasn't that one of the other six-axis movements in the first uh, game? Yeah, that's, could... that's off by default in this. For the best. 
So yeah, I mean, you don't even have to pop out to get this, this little aiming deal here. And then... It's awfully convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Later. But I, th I, th I think the ability to do that avoids the problem of just not using the grenades because then you will just pop out. Yep. And if you're popping out, why not just fire your gun? Yep. All right, where are we at here? I think we're gonna kill a few more guys. Hopefully head into the underground. Oh no. Oh, oh, damn it. I'm trying to show off a little bit more of the melee stuff, but uh, they have uh, they have they have snap to cover, they have roll, and then also uh, uh, in combat, you, know, uh, you use circle to get out of those grapples, like I was saying. So there are three different functions on the same button, hmm. uh, which can kind of get a little hairy sometimes. If you're, if you're trying to go between like melee combat and shooting at guys at the same time, sometimes you'll hit circle to do one thing and it'll do something else. Which is, uh, Snap you to cover as opposed to yeah, I kinda engaging wish the, the melee. I wish, I wish they had found a more elegant solution for that, but uh, well, it doesn't come up that often. Get a grenade. And that grenade. All right. And you get a grenade. And you get a grenade. Yeah, I want some grenades. Take a free grenade. British guys. British guys are largely the enemy in this game. Sounds about right. Yeah. Mostly in suits, you know. Yeah. Don't uh, never. Don't trust a British person. Never, in a never, suit. never give a suave British man in a, in a nice suit uh, your your full trust. I'll let Sully handle that one. That's pretty cool that Sully oh, actually no. gets into melee combat. Uh oh. Is there a little bit of auto aim on that blind fire? Kind of looked like there was. I, I've never used blind fire in this, so I haven't really seen that. But I don't know. I'm gonna try it here. Dude, it yeah, it totally is. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, it's putting you like a half inch over. We're on normal here. I don't know if that's. Uh... Oh, you know, shit, I should have let him throw that because. Uh... You couldn't throw back grenades in the last one, could you? Do, uh, do you remember? Because that is a huge part of the game here. Oh, here comes one. Let's see if it lands. Yeah, so you, you see that little quick timey. Oh, wow. Yep, now that guy's dead. That is so much more useful than awesome. getting getting out of cover, uh, accidentally running the wrong way because you actually just ran into the grenade yeah. and then... Throwing back grenades, I should have mentioned it in the review, is one of the best things about the combat in this game. Hey, every first-person shooter, feel free to take and, that. And I mean, there's a uh, and there's definite uh, there's definite skill involved in doing it because that little meter that popped up. Oh, here we you, go. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, yeah. So here's a little bit more. You can push guys into walls, and you'll do different moves uh, like right that. There. Uh, there's there's a lot of visual variety to the, the melee combat, even if you're not doing a lot of different things on the controller. Um, but the, the the grenade throwback mechanic, like the little the little arc meter that you have to time moves differently on each Up throw. Hmm. So you never know exactly what the timing is going to have to be. So you're basically taking your eyes off the other combat just to on, make sure you can throw door. that thing back. So it's not like it happens automatically or anything. But great way to save your own grenades because you can just get over here. All right. All right. Well, which way now? I'm not really sure. Why don't we try going mm. down? Hey, look at this. See, this is what happens if you're a British person in a, it's one in a of the suit. Helmets, man. Especially when you're chasing after, you know, a centuries-old lost city. Yeah, with, uh, that never ends well. Kind of an ominous idea, supernatural sure element going, going like on. The plot thickens. Uh, not, not to, to get too uh, uh, spoiler about how maybe it plays out, but one of my favorite parts of uh, Uncharted 2 was the, the quiet moment you get uh, when you explore... What is that section of the game? Is it Tibet or uh, hmm. you know what I'm talking about when you, you, you're not in combat and you're going through that like mountain village? Yes, 
Yeah. Uh, like after you're in the coma insane. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You get knocked just, out. And yeah. Are there, are there are there are there similar moments to that uh, in the kinda, game? Kind of. So. Yeah, yeah. Not not in that exact way, but uh, there are absolutely playable parts of this game that don't involve any of the climbing or shooting or puzzle solving or any of that stuff. That's cool. It's just like experiencing this environment that they've built is basically the point of those sections. Uh, so you can see what we got to do here. Uh, so four, then three, then four, then two, then three. I can remember that. Hey, the tile's depressed when you step on. Okay, what, three I'll X's? Is that so right? Don't step on any by uh, I think Good so, idea. Yeah. Three, four, one, two, three. Hey, I guess if you want to figure this out for yourself, don't watch this. Two, one, all right, there we go. Lots of neat stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there's there's quite a few uh, of those little puzzles, and, and a lot of them are more involved than that. Uh, it's pitch dark in here. Want to give us some light? Sure. I can't speak to how many uh, upgrades they've made on the technical side, but uh, cases like this uh, make it seem like they have they have got the PS3 Some figured out pretty well. Yeah, well, we saw, you know, even in Resistance 3, like the light, like, it seems like maybe something that as we're getting later into the generation, the PS3 is able to handle a little bit better is just this really incredible lighting that just gives a, a really enjoyable sense of mood. It, it feels like it has kind of pulled ahead a little bit in some cases. Uh, some of this stuff just looks so good. Yeah, look at that. Pentagrams? Look at that. No. Seems to be an alchemist lab. Not exactly. Wait a second. Does this place remind you of anything? Yeah, Marlowe's creepy hideout, now that you mention it. Sully. Sully, this is John Dee's lab. All the way out here? In France? Well, he must have traced the clues back to the Crusades, just like Lawrence did. Hey, look at the this. The Florence of Arabia, in case you're wondering. Oh, really? Good old T.E. <laughs> T.E. Lawrence. Yeah, they, I mean... I don't know how much more of this they can get away with. This might be the last game, but they definitely, you know, get real heavy into name dropping historical figures in this, which is really cool. You know, it lends some it lends some veracity to this stuff. You know, it makes it feel like it's kind of real, like you're actually touching the past in some way. Uh, but at the same time, you know, how many how many Francis Drakes and, and Lawrence uh, Lawrences of Arabia are there that you could? Uh, you so could really lean on, really you know? And, and how many times can there be random supernatural elements in the world that the yeah. rest of the world isn't aware of somehow? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, they had, so, I mean, they did, you know, they did They did El Dorado. I think it was El Dorado in the first game, right? Zombies. Uh, yeah, and then uh, it was uh, Shangri-La in the last one, and now they're after this, uh, this Arabian city, which I had actually never heard of until this game hmm. uh, came along. But... Uh, the altar guards the entrance. And you know you're you know you're you're in London and then you're here in France and then you go to some other places like you end up in five or six different countries at least over the course of this game. Uh, I could see I mean if they make another one and that's a big if cuz you know they've made three of these and it's kind of they're they're a studio that or at least historically for the last two generations has has gone in threes. Yeah, so this very well could be the last one, but if they do more I could see some merit in like kind of trying to rein it in a little bit. Crafty old bastard. Maybe have a game that's kind of set in one place over the course of some period of time or something. But. Yeah, I'm definitely curious to see what happens with uh, Golden Abyss. Yeah. Because that, that's the first one that is not developed by them. Right. Uh, what we've seen definitely looks like Unchar uh, Uncharted, you know, I, and uh, I'm, but I, I'm curious to see how that fits into the to the mythology. It's definitely before. It's not going to carry it forward. But, right. Sully, give me a light. That is some that is some ni Man, nice ass better. lighting, Man. Sully. Really have to start your own Look at this. I'm just gonna run around and play with shadows. Hey, Na hey, Naughty Dog, you should make a horror game. Oh, Man, that would be great. What if they're doing that right now? Think about it. You gotta Think figure. You gotta figure they're at least thinking about. You know, they could they could be well into concepting whatever. Oh, abso absolutely. I mean, they were. You know, you go back and look at uh, what they've like talked really about making this out. game or any any of these yeah. games. How. How early on they were thinking about Uncharted uh, around the time when they were thought they were going to be done because of with Jax Three. Right. So they're a studio that's always forward thinking, and they're not a two two game studio. So uh, they're I think they're kind of like Bungie, and where they have you know small teams working on whatever the next big thing is, so that once everything wraps up, they can just make the transition. Right. I really I really like that they only make one game at a time because then you know that everybody at the studio is pretty much bringing their A game to it. Yep. Uh, which they have absolutely done in this game. 
Uh, I kind of feel like maybe we should cut it here. Yeah. I like this game. A, you should play this game, and B, you should play this game and not watch me play it. I mean, uh, it's Uncharted Three. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, if you yeah. ha didn't, if you didn't like Uncharted Two, there's nothing here that's going to convince you to to jump in. Right. Right. Like it's if, incremental if, improvements over over the over the second one. And if you loved Uncharted Two, yeah. And who didn't? I mean, if, if for some reason you don't like these games, fine. You know, that's 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 your prerogative. But uh, I won't I won't show you how to solve this particular puzzle. But uh, but if you do like the the previous games, like just go get this. Like this this is not to be missed. It's definitely one of the it's one of the best games of the year. One of the best games on the PS3. Uh, there's a ton more to it. Uh, all the multiplayer stuff. This is uh, too far ahead of release to actually play any of the multiplayer. The online pass is not functional yet. Uh, I'm gonna keep running around just looking at shadows. Uh, yes, yeah, let's, let's do that for twenty minutes. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be back with a, a full on video review at some point to show the the multiplayer and all that all that good stuff. But play Uncharted Three. All right, I'll do that. All right.